Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mike Jeffries, the play-by-play voice here at Barry Wrestling, and this is Getting to Know, a new program we're doing where we get to learn a little bit more about the talent and the wrestlers that make Barry Wrestling so great. And today joining me is Vaughn Vertigo. Vaughn, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Mike Jeffries. It's very hard to call you that. (laughs) (laughs) So first question, where are you from and how long have you been wrestling? Uh, I'm from North Haverbrook, Canada. No, I'm not from North (laughs) Haverbrook. I'm from Port Hope. Canada, which is a small town, suburbia of Toronto. Not really. It's like it's like half an hour outside of Oshawa. Let's just say that. If you know where Oshawa is, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> My wife is from Oshawa. Thank you for saying that. Listen, listen. You know how it is then. Yes. I'm not even going to take that back. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. And how long have you been wrestling? Uh, I've been doing shows for almost 10 years now, but I've been involved in independent wrestling for, I guess, 13 years now. Started when I was 14, so. Wow. And, uh, you know, November 1st, 2014, you were part of the first ever match here at Barry Wrestling. Yes, yes. You and Gabriel Ferza, you were victorious. Hell yeah, I, I, got my, I got my contract. Uh, it's me and Del Bruno, the only Barry Wrestling superstars who have a contract. I've tried to negotiate several times, but Sean Gibson will not respond. <laughs> so, it's a lifetime binding contract. Lifetime binding contract. But yeah, I won that match. That's right. And so, so what led to you being in that match? Like, how did that, that come about? I think at the time, uh, Forza and I both came from the same school, um, and we were looking for you know companies that were willing to take us under our wing. And I think at that point, we had come to Barry before and approached Tid at the time. It wasn't Barry, sorry. It would have been um, the previous promotion, PWE, before it turned to Barry. And we approached Tid about doing a, a, like a dark match before the show. We did a dark match against each other, which turned into like a best of three series kind of thing. Don't ask me who each won each one. I just know I won the last one which got me a contract, and then Gabriel Forza wasn't supposed to get a contract, but how come he's been here every single time after without a contract? How could he be working like that? He's, I mean, he is El Diablo. He works in in different ways. Hmm. But, uh... So, so it makes you wonder. What do you remember, like, do you remember that match, like, your feeling coming through the curtain, like, everything? Did it feel like the start of something? It, it did feel like the start of something, because it, it was cool to be, like, the the first match of like a new promotion and like a rebranding um did i think maybe you know barry would become a promotion that like everybody wants to work for maybe not at the time um did i think it would be a company that we could help build yes you know because uh at that point like we were looking for i think like c4 might have been the other place we were looking at like this is a place we can like kind of like sink our teeth into and you know build and uh, I always like to plug IWTV. We are on IWTV. Use the code 400 North when you sign up. Support Barry Wrestling. But if you go on there, you can see early fight or flight matches in C4. You guys look extraordinarily young. That's because we're like, I'm 18, so I can't even buy a beverage at the bar. <laughs> um, might have been 17 for one of those. I can't remember. No, I think I was 18. And when Forza would have been like 20, 21, 21, yeah. Yeah, the facial hair was a good decision. <laughs> I, 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 I know that as well. I'm 37, and it doesn't look like it. Yeah, I, I grew the facial hair out to look older, and now I'm starting to realize, like, I, I don't want to have, like, a big beard. I think I look better with, like, a, a small stubble, so I've kind of reduced it a bit. Oh, there you go. Um, but sorry, to circle back, so that first match, like, you talked about, you know, how you and Forza really, you were in that first match, and, like, I've talked with Sean and, you know, with Jim Lowe about this, that it was such a perfect first match, considering what you guys have become for Barry Wrestling. Yeah. Could you imagine back then being, you know, you were the Barry Wrestling champion, you've been in countless main events, you've been a tag champ. Like, could you have seen all of that way back in that first match? I don't think so. I mean, Forza and I have always had good chemistry wrestling each other. I think we literally just looked at it as an opportunity to show out and prove that we can be, we can add something to this product, right? Um, did I see that we were going to have all this success in the company? I don't think at the time, no. I mean, everybody wants to be successful in wrestling, but I didn't I didn't envision that. At the time, Forza and I were just, we were showing up to as many shows as we could, um, and Barry just happened to be one of the first ones that kind of said, like, hey, we'll use you, and, um, you know, hopefully that you can contribute to this product kind of thing. And, I mean, you and Forza as Fighter Flight have been, you know, multiple years now, two-time tag champions here in Barry. Yes. You've won championships in, I think, seven different promotions. I I don't know. A honestly. lot. It's a lot. <laughs> when, it's a lot of companies. <laughs> when did you realize you had something special there as a tag team? Uh, I think we realized, like, we, we were we never kind of really wanted to be a tag team. And this goes back to Squared Circle Wrestling. Um, we were thrown together as a tag team just because we, you know, were best friends outside the ring and we had the good chemistry. And then they threw Alexia in with us because she was hurt at the time. Um, and just because we're friends, like we, we were given this like really like lame raver character. We were called the Candy Kids. So if you know anything about the three of us, we do not party at all. And we we're like, yeah, well, you know, 
Uh, how about their uh, their ravers? You know, they take they take drugs and they go to they go to parties. You know, that that seems like them. And we're like, this is stupid. But what happened out of it is, as we learned halfway through it, once we committed to it, man, we were having so much fun. I mean, they took Alexia away from us. Um, but once we started having fun and realizing that we had chemistry together, probably near like the end of the run when we had uh, started having matches with like Aeroform. And we rebranded into Fight or Flight. We're like, we need to run with this because there are no tag teams in Ontario that are consistent. And we ran with it, and we, you know, we accomplished a lot. And it's Candy Kids, K A N D I K I D Z. Z on the end, yeah. So that that was that was very '90s in 2014. Very '90s, yes. <laughs> and uh, now, but you know, be serious for a minute. Like, obviously, you and Fuerza and Alexia, you've all come into the business together. You've yeah. Yeah. work together like how important is it to have people like that with you in the business and how much impact have they had on your career very important um a lot of impact because it's important to have people around you that you trust and respect to give you honest feedback on wrestling and you know i can ask for to watch a match and he'll tell me like blatantly what he didn't like about it or what i think he should have changed right and i can do the same for him um and it's almost like a i attribute a lot to like like kevin owens and generico like they they uh they kind of helped each other build, you know? So just kind of like feeding off each other and whatnot. I've been having Alexia as well. We can help her out and she can help us out in the same way. So yeah, it's like a lifetime bond you have with like if you're best friends in wrestling and you grow up together, like it's just something you, you always have. Especially because you guys were so young when you started too, so right? Young, yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. Now you guys have tra- you've traveled all over the place. So either a European travel story or like an Ontario with the candy kids. Do you have, you know, a PG funny travel story that you that you're willing to share with us? Uh maybe I'll start with the Forza one maybe. Um early on we started wrestling at C4 Wrestling. We were asked to take Pinky Sanchez back to uh Toronto. And we we sometimes we're often asked to drive like the name in or whatever. He had a show in Toronto the next day, but we were helping out, helping up, helping out set up. It was promising Abaddon, downtown Toronto, uh, run by Osiris. Um, so we took him back, and like, we thought he had a hotel. He didn't have a hotel. Okay, and he fell asleep on the drive home. We're like, okay, and he started, but like, he woke up randomly when I, I think we were playing Creed. We were playing Hired by Creed, and we just hear him start singing in the back seat, and we're like. Okay, Pinky Sanchez is awake. Um, great. So then he, uh, I was, <laughs> I was going to Humber College, uh, and Ulysses and I were sleeping in the same bed. Forza, sorry, oh, we added that one out. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Forza and I were sleeping in the same bed, and uh, Pinky Sanchez was was on my like lazy boy like chair, like leaned back, falling asleep, and we literally had like we had to be at the venue like eight a.m. We got in at like six, oh. so like maybe have to get a sheet of shower. Yeah, so we slept for like an hour, and then we like wake him up. We're like poking him, like, "Thank you. We gotta go to the venue. We gotta take you to the venue, man." He's like, "Oh, why so early, man?" So we quote, we quote that all the time. <laughs> why so early? <laughs> we like put him in the car, and we drive to the show. And we get there, and we're we're like paid to do ring crew for this show. I think I had hurt my shoulder the night before, so I ended up not doing the show. But Fuerza I wrestled Joey Janela oh. on the show. You have to ask him about that one. <laughs> I, I'll put that down. Um, <laughs> but like we had to set up for this show and it's the Lithuanian Hall downtown Toronto it's a beautiful venue um, but the problem is there's these, these are like four chandeliers that hang maybe two chandeliers that hang down from the ceiling and the promoter wanted us there so early so he could raise the chandeliers so he could add his own lights to just leave the chandeliers man so we had to like step on these scaffolds that were like like six scaffolds high and it's just <laughs> where's the, the promoter <laughs> There's no like safety rails, no safety at all to it. We're just like like balancing on the top of this like scaffold, and we have to raise the the chandelier up and like pin it at a, a spot higher up just so his lights can shine in the ring better. <laughs> it's at, like 10 a.m. and we didn't sleep. I'm hurt. My shoulder's messed up. Uh, and Picky Sanchez is like asleep at the venue somewhere. <laughs> God, like what's going on? Um, that's and then, awful. That's not, I'm not done. Like, oh no! I thought I was gonna fall off one point. I'm like looking down at the ground. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, I'm gonna fall. I remember thinking that because I think I was on the like there were I was on the second to last platform. I was like, Forza, you gotta go up. I can't. Like, I'm gonna fall over. I'm gonna <laughs> He's like, okay, I'll go up. And we were pinning one up, and the chandelier was like against his like flannel shirt. <laughs> And the light bulb bursts, and it catches fire for a minute. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh my god, he's on fire! I start like patting him down. Oh no! <laughs> on top of the scaffold, it's like the worst situation. 
it's terrible. It's, it's like, what's the most dangerous thing you've done in wrestling? Well, I was set up for a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This Jeez. isn't even really a road story. This is a setup story. Hey, that's hey, that's a great story. I'm it's not a, done. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> The ring was built by the promoter himself. But it was it was a fairly like good looking ring. The problem was it was a little too long. It was maybe like twenty, maybe nineteen feet, twenty feet, something like that. A little bigger than your standard like independent wrestling ring. And the guardrails were a little tight. Like I want to say there was like maybe two feet beside the guardrails. So you kind of had like this little <laughs> tiny space around it because he built the ring too big. So he built the ring, and the guy's like, oh. The people are in the ring and they're like, "Oh, this feels really weird. Like the boards are slipping. They're slipping like through the post. Like they're falling." And the guy's like, "Oh, I, you got any car jacks?" I'm like, "Yeah, I, I got one in my car." All right, like we gotta round up as many car jacks as we can. We gotta raise these boards back up because they're like falling through. They they stack like a bunch of like venue tables underneath it to keep it up. And there's another part where you put like the like car jacks to like keep the ring, the boards up from falling or anything because it wasn't measured correctly. And everybody wrestled on it like that. And I was like, "This is so." So strange. The show happened. I don't remember. Oh, no, I remember a little bit after that. Like, we helped. I think I had, like, school in the morning. So it's like, we got to, like, leave. Like, we're dead. And the promoter was like, okay, fine. I understand. Like, you can help a little bit. Like, my shoulder's messed up at this point. We're not taking the chandeliers down. There's no way. I think they ended up doing that. Um, I just remember we got outside with my friend Trevor because he was, like, filming the show. Because I used to get, like, my college friends to film it because I was in uh, television broadcasting. And we just go outside, and we just get to the car. I think I took, like, a swig of, like, some water, and I just, bleh, just threw up all over the sidewalk. <laughs> like, it was just... <laughs> it was just, like, the icing on the cake of, like, this, like, terrible weekend. And I just threw up all over... <laughs> I threw up all over the sidewalk, and, that, like, Forrest is just looking at me like, yeah, that 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 is what would happen. You would just throw up on the sidewalk at the end of this. That, that, that makes sense. All right, well, thanks for joining. No, I, just, I, I don't know. I, I think we've peaked. I think we've peaked. That's, I cut the rest of the questions out. That. That's incredible. Oh, my goodness. The carjacks under the... That's... Don't give Sean any ideas. I didn't even get into any like, European stories. I, I would just say that Junior Bonito is a saint. Um, and without swearing, we took him to a burger store. Um, I mean, you just bleep, bleep it out, I guess. But he wanted to get the Big Bitch Burger, is what it was called. <laughs> And uh, so Mark and I are going up and we're ordering our burgers and like they're kind of like not Mark, Mark is Mark Wheeler. Mark is Mark Wheeler. I should clarify that. Me, Mark, and Junior Benito. Um, and he's ordering his burger and it's, you know, just he's saying like whatever it was, like the, I can't remember. But just Junior really wanted this big bitch burger, but he goes up and says, can I get the big B burger, please? <laughs> and, the, and the guy's like, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, what, mate? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, big B burger. And Mark's like, he won't swear. Like, he just won't. And the guy's like, okay, weirdo. Just orders his burger. Which country was that in? I was in England. Oh, I was in England. Yeah, that's that's one Junior Benito story. Oh he's, my, that's I don't know how best to explain him. He's he's a wonderful creature. He he is a <laughs> unique unique man. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So speaking of your travels, we got to try and get this get back on the tracks here. So yeah. you've been to Italy. We're running, late. We're running long here. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean. I, I would say I get paid anyway, by the I, hour, but I don't get paid. I got all day, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you've been to Italy, Germany, Denmark, and the UK for wrestling. Yes. And you've been in different parts of Canada. And a little bit of America. And in America as well. Yep. Um, what's what's on your bucket list, your wrestling area or country bucket list? Like, what's what's the top of your list right now? I mean, right I think like an obvious answer for most people is Japan. Yeah. But it's not like a, it's not an easy route to get there. It's not really like, there are some independent shows, but you really have to get in with like a, you know, like a New Japan or a NOAA or a DDT to really make that happen. Mm. Kind of thing. Um, right now, immediately, like I would love to do Ireland personally. Like, That'd be cool. Like, OTT is a really good company over there. I would love to wrestle for. There's a lot of other like European countries that like to do like Sweden and Poland, and because there's a, like, like people don't really think about the European scene. They just think of like England, like maybe Germany. But there, there's so much going on in Europe and so many good talents there. But I would love to wrestle. So I feel like I, like I've I've been to Europe now seven times, and like it just feels like there's still like unfinished business. <laughs> you know? Well, six six and a half. The one was cut a little bit short in 2020 on here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, it was a six-week trip that turned into two with Brent Banks where we kind of forced out of the country. But, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Now, you've been all over. You've made a name for yourself. What what brings you back to Barry Wrestling all the time? What makes this place special? It's home, really. Like, And I, I was saying this the other day when uh, the U.K. guys were here, uh, Wild Boar and Eddie Dennis, that, like, like you're going to love Barry because <clears> – <throat> It's like the best wrestlers on t- in Ontario wrestling for like a family crowd, and it's like it's just people are hired here to have fun, you know. And I'm just I'm very proud of what this roster has come over the years because it was a very different roster back in the day. 
Um, and now it feels like it just like people want to work here, right? It, it feels like a bucket list thing for people. And it's only like a short drive. It's an hour up the, the 400. And, you know, Sean's obviously, I can't say enough about Sean Gibson. He's a wonderful man. He's done a lot for me. And I, I'm just very, like, thankful for what this company is. Like, I'm hurt right now, and I'm still here today. You know, like, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it is. I don't like to say good things about Sean Gibson. But, no, yeah, it, it, yeah. it is a great place and a great locker room. And that's what a lot of people say as well. That's right. And I'll give you some 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> he's pushing for that raise. Um, <laughs> up my contract. Something, something that at least I think you're quite good at is... The, the promotion on social media, you know, yes. you do video editing. It's what you went to school for. Yep. What is, a, you know, for new wrestlers coming in, mm -hmm. what is one big piece of advice you would give them as far as promoting themselves? Because it is very important in today's wrestling landscape, but especially if you want to travel, like, yeah. you got to get yourself out there. Um, assume that nobody knows who the hell you are and just, like, be present, really. That's how I've made money, really, is just, like, being available. Because here in Canada, you just have to realize that nobody knows who the hell you are. You know, unless you're put in that position where you are the guy who the names are coming in to wrestle and they can vouch for you, which often not not most people get that opportunity until you're like a Josh Alexander, right? Um, you have to look at yourself and think, like, there's only so much you can do here. If you want to get better, you just have to, like, it really is just the more eyes in front of you, the more people are going to know who you are. And, that's, and a lot of people don't, I think, understand that fully. Like, when they first start wrestling, they just think they'll they'll show up and then they'll assume that just because they're a wrestler they'll get booked and that's not necessarily the case I mean if you're if you're coming in looking like Batista then you might have you know you, <laughs> you have a little, little bit more working for you but you know if you're 5 foot 8 170 pounds like me you gotta work a little harder and I've always realized that well and that's I mean it's a good attitude to have yeah you know to yeah. work for it and uh I know you, you kind of answered answer this when you're you are injured right now. Yes. And I, you know, what do you do to fill the void when you're not wrestling? But you just said you you come Be to wrestling. Creative. Become the wrestling. <laughs> like I still want to be involved. I'm, I mean, I'm only off for you know a month or so here, but um, it's nice to have a break in a way. But just be creative. Like I showed up to wrestling last weekend on my birthday because I love wrestling. That's really what it comes down to. And I just want to contribute in a creative way. Brad Myers is waving to us through the door. Brad Myers. Hi, Brad. He's one of the best. One of the best. And uh, so, final question. We're coming to the end of 2022. By the time this airs, it might already be 2023. Yes. What does a successful 2023 look like for you? Like, what is one goal that you want to look back on that year and be like, I accomplished that? More traveling, really. Um, hate to say it, but, like, th the less I'm here in Canada, I feel like... Uh, um, I'm accomplishing something. I love Canada. I love being here, but I, I want to get out there more. You know, I want to be able to represent Canada on a global scale. So it's more just getting out there. You know, I can't promise I'll be here at Barry Wrestling every month, but I'll try to be here every time I'm in Canada. You know, and uh, that's you know, it's sad to see you go when you leave, but I'm <laughs> proud of what you're doing, man. It's awesome and and all the best. And you can see a lot of this man's matches on IWTV, also on the WWE Network. Yeah, there's like seven of them there. Which is, I don't know. And you're a thumbnail for one of them, I believe. I'm a thumbnail. And I think you can actually search my name now. Somebody said, but if you search my name, my, my matches will come up. So very cool, very cool. So Vaughn, thank you so much for joining me. Where can people find you on social media? Twitter at Vaughn Vertigo, Instagram at Vaughn Vertigo, YouTube at Vaughn Vertigo. TikTok at Von Vertigo, Hive at Von Vertigo. Let's see if that survives. Let's see if Hive survives. <laughs> Tout at Von Vertigo. Um, let's see. Uh, Backyard Pro. There's a lot of that stuff too. Look that up. Yes, and Backyard Pro. <laughs> also check that out on YouTube. That I, that was awesome. You want to talk about promotion, doing something during the pandemic. Thank you. What you did was incredible for that. Thank you. But no, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hope to see you back and healthy again. Yeah. And uh, be sure to check out more of Getting to Know as we're going to do more interviews going forward. Thank That's you right. so much. I'm Mike Jeffries. This is Von Vertigo. We'll see you again soon. He's not Mike Jeffries.